we're going to do now is just take a little step into the future and have a look at what we're doing with augmented and virtual reality. I said earlier at the start of my talk that using the native SDKs allow you to get really close to the, the chipsets that are on these devices. And that's one of the reasons why we're seeing so much interest in AR, VR right now. It's because the, the mobile phones that we have in our pockets, they have dedicated chips that support this. So instead of being very high-end equipment, everyday equipment now is becoming possible. It's making AR, VR possible. Now, when you combine that with the runtime and its capabilities of working with 3D scenes, as well as of all the data content that's available from ArcGIS, you can really start to build very rich AR, VR applications with runtime. So what exactly are we doing here? Well, first of all, to support VR, we're supporting a stereo rendering mode. So you can take a 3D scene, convert it to a stereo viewing mode, and then view it in a dedicated headset. Or if you're wanting to make augmented reality applications, you can make this background of your scene transparent. And that way, you can overlay your scene on top of what the front-facing camera sees to augment the reality. So to show us this in action, I'd like to introduce Adrian from the team. And he's got some really cool demos, I believe. <laughs> Thank you, Ewan. Augmented reality and virtual reality are all about building immersive experiences. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is using our new API. I have here on my phone the same demo that Kerry used earlier. I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a virtual reality experience for this application. On my computer, I have my Xamarin project open inside Visual Studio for Mac. You must be used by, uh, to see runtime code by now. So you can see that I have my operational layers. I have my elevation coming from a raster file. I have the observer position coming from a shape file. And I have the vehicle's 3D models. And finally, I'm using the same function that Kerry uh, just described earlier to create the line of sights. To make this a VR application, I'm going to add two new functionalities. The first one is to change the rendering to be stereo. That will allow my eyes to each have their own perspective on the scene, giving me that depth perception. Today, I'm going to use a cardboard. So I'm just going to implement the side-by-side -side barrel distortion stereo rendering. It is that simple. The second thing I need to get a VR experience is to be able to control the scene view camera with a sensor that detects the orientation of my phone. To do this, I'm going to use a first-person camera controller. This has a body, which is a motion data source. The motion data source role is to fetch the sensor's data and feed them to the first-person camera controller. You can write your own uh, motion data source, but we provide a phone motion data source that will connect to your compass, magnetometer, etc. And we also provide an AR kit and also an AR core pretty soon. Then all I need to do is to start my motion data source. And now, if I run the application on my phone with those simple changes and put my phone inside a cardboard, I have now a virtual reality experience of Kerry's demo. When building an AR or VR application, one of the challenges you will face is actually to navigate through the, your virtual world. I have here an application that enables new way to navigate your data. Here, I'm still looking at Here, I'm still looking at downtown San Diego. But if I want to look closer, I don't pinch on my screen. I just walk towards it. If I want to see what's happening on my right, I don't use a mouse. I just look on my right. 
And if I want a perspective from the street, I don't use a keyboard. I just crouch down. <laughs> this is by far the most natural way to navigate my scene. AR also enables new way to collaborate. Rex is right now on his tablet having the exact same experience I have browsing the data. Oh, we cannot see Rex. <laughs> oh, here he is. So you can see Rex's avatar on my screen and he's looking around the data. <laughs> Rex is right now right next to me, but he could be on the other side of the world, and we could still collaborate the same way in an augmented reality experience. I can even have a better understanding on Rex's perspective on the scene by enabling a view shed from Rex's point of view. So, The area in green are the areas that are visible to Rex. The one in red are hidden by other features, and the ones that are not colored are outside of this field of view. This is just one of the new experiences that you can build using the ARVR private beta for the ArcGIS Runtime SDKs. We can't wait to see what you will build using this. To know how to join the beta program, Back to you, Anne, that is just tipping on some building of San Diego right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. A couple of really good demonstrations there. So I said at the start of the AR VR, this is a very small look into the future. It really isn't very far at all, because what you've seen today is available to all of you if you apply to the beta program, and you can download the SDKs, and you can start building these applications today. It's as simple as sending an email to ArcGIS Runtime ARVR Beta at Esri.com, and you too can be building the applications that you saw Adrian and Rex demonstrate. Mm -hmm.